Hello everyone and welcome to Monash College Virtual Classroom Demonstration. I'm Dr Lucia Michelli, the Diploma Head of Studies and Humanities at the College. I'm really pleased you're able to join us today to get a first-hand look at how our virtual classroom operates. While international borders remain closed, providing a high quality education for all of our students remains our priority. And we are delivering this through blended online virtual classroom and face-to-face -face pathways programs. It is our commitment to provide new students starting their studies with us offshore with the opportunity of a guaranteed pathway into Monash University without slowing down the education journey. In addition, the completion of the Diploma Part 2 allows students to transition to the second year of their chosen undergraduate degree at Monash University. Our online environment is built on the same approach we use in our face-to-face -face classes. The same teachers, the same curriculum, the same support. In fact, we actually strengthened our support model so that students receive tailored individual support from experienced teachers who can help them with specific concerns. We also have learning skills advisors counsellors and student engagement specialists, all dedicated to supporting and encouraging our students. In today's virtual classroom taster session, one of our diplomas teachers, Nye, will be taking you through the topic, working in education an introduction to the profession. And you will be learning from one of our current diploma students, Natalie, as she shares her experiences in the virtual classroom. We will also, talk about the support services available to students to make sure you have the best possible experience with the college. Our team has one goal in mind, to give you a fantastic learning experience that sets you up for your undergraduate studies. I'm going to hand it over to Nye now, and I look forward to join, you joining us in the Monash College virtual classroom and then face-to-face -face on campus once restrictions are lifted. Over to you, Nye. So welcome everyone. My name's Nyai Nguyen. I'm glad to have you join us today in our simple class on Diploma of Education. I will take you through the virtual classroom tester and show you how we use Zoom to teach our lessons. You will see a chat Zoom function on your screen and please put in any question that you might have throughout the session and we will reply to you as best as we can. And welcome to the virtual classroom demonstration at Monash College. And the topic we are focusing on today is working in education, an introduction to the profession. And you can see on the screen that we are gonna have some lovely you know, friends joining our class today. That is some of my groupies and also you know, the angel fist, but clearly they are not gonna distract us. So I hope that you will enjoy the lesson. Here we go. All right, so let's join me watching the very first scenario in our teaching profession. All right, so imagine you've got a very smart, but a little bit of task and mischievous students like a Jack in your class. What would you do if you were Jack's teacher? And how would you manage your class behavior like in this scenario? So let's delay your answer because you won't find it yourself as we go through this lecture. So when thinking of blending yourself in the teaching professions, let's take one step and reflect quickly on the reason why you want to become a teacher. So 10 seconds for you to type in the chat box. Why do you want to become a teacher? Yeah, thank you everyone. And that's fantastic. Some of you may say that you love children, you want to have a relationship with the students, you love your job, you love interacting with the young generation. Absolutely. So when you think in terms of you know, education, the education double degree programs throughout this course 
you will understand the structure, policies, behavior, practices, and requirements of the profession. And besides, you will position yourself as an emerging professional, and you work within an, an assortment of frameworks and legislations that guiding your teaching profession. And central to your achievement in this course is your understanding of the foundational knowledge, as well as you know, the skills, interpersonal skills that you shape along the way as a pre-service teacher. And the highlight of this program, what is it? I guess you can, you know, I guess you can get it from this uh, slide. So the highlight of this program is you will have the first hand experience in an Australian school. And it will do one full week placement in the very first trimester in your education double degree. And you can see in this slide, our education student placement in Silverton and Clayton North Primary School. And their facial expressions can tell you how much fun and unique experiences they have gained from their education placement. So let's ace our understanding about teaching. What is teaching? The Confucius saying, if you think in terms of a year, plant a seed. If in terms of 10 years, plant trees. If in terms of 100 years, teach people. So clearly teaching is the most noble job and we are educating the future generation of the country. Therefore, teaching like a job of a gardener. We start with planting the seed, enriching the soil, watering it regularly, creating the favorite conditions for the seed to sprout and you nurture the plant every day with love and care until you see the seed start blooming into flowers. So using this metaphor is exactly, you know, uh, applicable in our teaching context. I can say with confidence that teaching is a process intended for learning. And this process induces the change in our students, be it knowledge, skills, values, or behavior. And through teaching, the teacher communicates the message with impacts on the audience. And precisely, teaching is a pedagogy and it's the art and the profession of teaching. So let's look at the core of our teaching profession. Without doubt, teaching is an art because it's both reflective and inventive. It is an art because it is an act of interpretation and self-expression on the part of the, of the educator. And the art of the teaching comes from the heart, the personalities, the unique experiences and the talent of the teacher. Each teacher like you and me, we do have our innate abilities, personalities to shape our teaching styles and the way that we engage with the student. And it's so important to acknowledge that the art of teaching involves adaptation. A teacher has to make so that she can accommodate specific uh, situation as well as the student learning styles. Why being an art, teaching is also regarded as a science. It's like two sides of a coin. Why do we need the scientific side of teaching? By science, I mean effective techniques we, as a teacher, frequently follow the research-based practices so that we can promote student achievement. And the science of teaching involves the generalization from the research about effective teaching as well as effective learning. For instance, our scientific knowledge come from the child development as well as the structure of the curriculum. In Australia, as well as in Victoria, we have the state curriculum and the national curriculum. That is a Victorian curriculum and the Australian curriculum that you are gonna expose throughout your study in Monash University. So in spirit of teaching as an art and teaching as a science, what makes teacher effective? Here are few insights into being an effective teacher. Primarily, effective teachers know how to make expert use of their existing instructional materials, 
so that the teachers can devote more time to the best practices. And these practices can help enrich and clarify the content for the students. Secondly, effective teachers also have sound knowledge about the student so that they can adapt the instruction to the needs of the student and they anticipate any misconception in the student existing knowledge. Last but not least, the teaching, they teach the students with metacognition strategies, and especially they create the favorable opportunities as well as the conditions for students to master these metacognitive strategies. And clearly, effective teachers know that they need to teach more and manage less. If the memory doesn't fail me, the iconic images of a good teacher often associated with being strict, using discipline to manage the students. However, it turns out that the essence of effective teaching rests more on effective teaching strategies and less on classroom management. The sound a little bit unfamiliar to you, right? Let me explain further. There's a close association between effective teaching and effective classroom management. So Christine Richmond in 2007, in her book, Teach More and Manage Less, indicate that teacher efforts need to be directed towards minimizing managing time and maximizing the learning time for the students. And these actions assume that the curriculum is worth engaging. And they are more likely to have, you know, especially students, those who are likely to find the relevance to the curriculum. If they don't find the relevance with the curriculum and they have a difficulty in understanding the curriculum, they will be less engaging in learning. And both of which will lead to off-task behavior that you can see from Jack in the video at the beginning of the lecture today. Therefore, an engaging curriculum is one where students have personal connections to the materials, either emotionally or by connecting the new information with the previously acquired knowledge. If the student do not consider particular activities interesting, relevant, or even within the scope of their capabilities, they're not gonna engage with them. They don't like it. And clearly they will disengage. So this partially explained the behavior that Jack, the mischievous, but also smarter student demonstrated at the beginning partially because of the curriculum, might not be interesting enough to retain his interest as well as his attention. So how can you address a student like a Jack and so many other students in our class? Effective, student, effective teachers know how to address a student different capabilities, needs and interest. If there's one word to describe the Australian classroom, what would it be? Someone says friendly teacher, other might say advanced curriculum, some might say stress-free learning environment, you are all correct. Some students come to the school with diversities of background, interests, capabilities, and accordingly, they will have different educational, emotional, social, intellectual, and even physical needs. Students are never the same. So they can't be treated in exactly the same way. So positively engaging and motivating students means that the curriculum programs should be designed in a way that the learning needs of students are catered for, assessment procedures are responsive to the learning outcomes and the goals of the students with diverse needs. Teaching is oriented towards extra level capabilities. And it is to ensure that every student stands a chance of being successful. Therefore, as a teacher, we are not required to fix the student. Instead, we need you to provide the learning environment that is safe, inclusive, welcoming, and accepting to the student diversities. And in this learning environment, we provide the opportunity for students to learn success and excel. And another part of effective teachers is the ability to design high impact lesson plan. 
Teachers need to be clear about the learning outcomes, establish these learning outcomes at the beginning of the lesson, confirm and revise these goals throughout the lesson, and at the end, they give students feedback on their progress. The other cornerstone of being an effective teacher points to the fact that we need to build a positive teacher-student relationship. Primarily, Mazano and Mazano in 2003, they analyzed more than 100 studies and they found that the quality teacher-student relationships serve as a cornerstone of effective classroom management. The teacher with a high quality relationship with the students had 31% less discipline problem, rules violation, and related, and related problems compared to the teachers with the low quality relationship with the students. And secondly, we need to be very clear that what this relationship look like and such connections do not mean a friendly, anything goes relationship. Instead, effective teacher-student relationship are characterized by setting clear behavioral expectation and the learning goals for the student, as I explained earlier. And thirdly, students clearly want the teacher guidance. Chu and Tali in 1997 interviewed more than 700 students from year four to year seven. And they felt that students preferred strong teacher guidance and control rather than the teachers who are permissive in their conduct. And last, effective classroom teachers demonstrate care to their students, but with certain boundaries. So clearly positive teaching relationship is fundamental to effective classroom management, student engagement and high quality teaching. Now let's take a few seconds to recap the lecture today. Within this lesson, I have walked you through the fundamentals of working in education, the course outcome, the essence of teaching, teaching as an art and teaching as a science, as well as the valuable experiences of working right from the very first semester of your education degree program in an Australian schools. And finally, I have unpacked the factors contributing to effective teachers. So now let's take a quick recap of our session today to check your overall understanding of this lesson by playing a Kahoot game. So let's use your mobile phone and type www.kahoot.it, all right? All right, everyone, the game pin is 1295047. We are waiting for you. Let's join. Very quick. Let's get in, everyone. We are waiting for you. Let's try. Give it a go. True or false? Excellent. Yeah, teaching is an art because it comes from teacher personality experiences. Well done. All right, second question. True or false again? Okay, and clearly the answer is opposite. Teachers should and manage less. Well done for Giraffe. And we see Mercat as well. The last one, Jack is smart student. Distract others, what should the teacher do? Fantastic. 
you nail it, everyone. So we encourage Jack to help other students when he finishes his work. So congratulations, Giraffe, Mercat, and Lugana. Well done. All right, so let me take this opportunity to invite our education student, Natalie. She's going to share with you her study experiences in our education virtual classroom. Over to you now, Natalie. Okay, thank you, Nai. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalie. I'm from China. I'm going to finish my Diploma of Education and Business at the end of this month. I'm very happy to be here and share my online learning experience with you. I have a very positive experience about learning through Visual Classroom in Monash College. Because of the travel restrictions, I cannot meet with my classmates and teachers face-to-face. -face. However, I still can work with them very closely through learning in the Visual Classroom. I enjoy learning my education course online because I think the lessons are very engaging and interactive. My education teacher Nai has introduced many ICT tools to support her student learning online. At the beginning of the Chime Minister, she created a Google Share folder which contained all the relevant documents that students need for completing the education course. I think this made learning much easier because I can find out the information that I want in just a few seconds. Also, she used Google PowerPoint to share the lecture slide with her student. As her student, I can reassist the lecture slide at any time that I want. And it also allowed me to see all the notes that she makes on the each of the Google slide. Beyond that, Moodle is a very powerful platform that provides student access to all the learning material for uh, all the learning materials. And we can also we can monitor our learning progress and our results for each assignments that we have done for the course. Also, he has a function called course formers, which provides me a chance to communicate and collaborate with my classmate. And students can discuss topics, share ideas, and even feedback on each other works through these functions or modules. And other advantage of learning online is that the class recordings are always available for students in Moodle. Therefore, I can watch the class recording to refresh my knowledge, which help me to better prepare for the assessment. My teacher also used WeChat group for my class as a way to deliver the class outline, check homeworks and class work, and communicate with her students. Group assignments is a highlight in our education course because as a teacher, it is very important for us to know how to collaborate with other teachers to increase student learning and achievement. I just finished a group assignment and I found out that the group assignments was very interesting and meaningful. For these assignments, I delivered my lesson in a small group with other two students from my education class. These group assignments provide me chance to learn from my classmates because each of us taught different subjects and used different teaching methods and results. We did role play for these assignments. When I delivered my lesson, my group members played the roles as students. And other part of these assignments is each of us need to observe our group member teaching sections. So, um, and we need to provide feedback for uh, each of our group members. I learned a lot from the peer feedback because I think it's very important for pre-service teacher like me to listen to others' opinion so I know my strength and weakness which benefit for my professional development. I work very closely with my group members throughout these assignments. We have a WeChat group and we closely connect with each other. Uh, yes. Um, for education students, uh, we need to do a placement each child minister. I did my placement with my mentor, Dr. Adrian So in Monash College. And during the placement, I got the actual chance to work like a professional teacher. Except for teaching, my mentor also taught me lots of skill, like how to produce student report, marking schedule, and marking paper. This valuable experience also helped me to get a part-time tutoring jobs outside of the college. And during the placement, I also got chance to know many other students who are also studying in Monash College. Uh, they come from different backgrounds, 
So as a teacher, we need to know our student and structure our lessons to meet the physical and social development of our students. And overall, I enjoy my placement experience and it's further confirms to me that I'm following a career path that I'm suited to. And I'm going to continue to study my double degree of business and secondary education in Monash University after I finish the uh, diploma course. I think the diploma education course helped me to be well prepared for my future study in Monash University and to become a professional teacher. I have finished my sharing, so thank you for listening. Now, please take over the sections. All right, thank you so much, Natalie, for sharing your experiences with us. And it's great to hear that you have been enjoying your time at Monash College and have found the virtual classroom in education fun and engaging. I just wanted to quickly let you know about our various su support services you have access at Monash College. Our commitment is to support you to achieve your best, and it doesn't change regardless whether you are online, through the virtual classroom, or face to face. Even when you are studying online from your home country, you will still have access to all support services available at Monash College to help you along the way. To support you in pursuing your dream uh, of a Monash University education in Australia, we are offering the student who are unable to travel to Australia a 20% study grant of the tuition fee or you know, the, for the intake shown in this slide. For students in China, if you have a choice between study grant or on-campus support in our Monash Learning Center located in Shanghai. These offer are limited, and if you'd like more information, please visit our website. We have friendly, dedicated student engagement and student services team who organize a range of clubs and societies for you. You can join to learn new skills and meet the students from all around the world. Some of the clubs they offer are music club, cooking clubs, game clubs, and a lot more. And we also have learning and career advisors. You will be able to contact them to make sure that you are on the right path to Monash Uni. They can help you with your everyday study, and they can also help you to transition smoothly into Monash University. To achieve your best in Monash College, you need to feel supported, and especially in every aspect of your life. So that's why your health and your well being is a priority at Monash College. If you have any problems, any concerns, our counselor will offer free confidential counseling to help you with your personal, academic, and emotional challenges. And of course, we have teachers and we are wonderful, dedicated to help you to achieve your best. We are also very excited to introduce our brand new vertical campus. This campus is gonna be opening soon and set across 10 storage with more than 130 inspiring in, uh, flexible learning spaces. The Darkland campus is designed to foster collaboration and innovation between you and the teachers like me. So located in the harbor in front of uh, Prensit and only a few minutes from the CBD, it will be close to everything. Uh, for example, you can have access to public transport, restaurant, shopping, parkland, sporting facilities, tourist attraction, and a lot more. So thank you for joining, and we hope this has given you a better understanding of what studying in a virtual classroom is like in Monash College. If you'd like some more information about Monash College Pathway programs, please visit our website. The 2022 Cost Guide is also available in our website. If you'd like to attend other virtual classroom sessions, please use the QR code you can see in the slide here. If you have any questions, send them to marketing at monascollege.edu.au and you will receive an answer as soon as possible. Please follow us in our social channels to see what activities you may be able to get involved while at Monash College. Thank you for joining. We hope to see you soon in the virtual classroom in Monash College, as well as in Melbourne, when we can meet face to face again very soon. Thank you.